kingdom authority, the unlimited power. Oh glory, he sanctified me, he filled me up with the Holy Ghost, and even about now, there is fire. Shut up, God promise you the peace in the midst of the flood. Church, there's a peace that is available, even in your situation. Watch therefore, for ye know neither the day nor the hour wherein the Son of Man cometh. We don't know the day or the hour, but indeed we know the season. Let me just establish that. And so the message is this. What does this tell us? It tells us that there were ten virgins. All of them were virgins. All of them were virgins. They were all pure. They had lamps. And I need you to understand that the lamps, it represent our human body. And the vessels represents our souls. They both knew the bridegroom was coming. They all were present for the same wedding. All of them were traveling and the same path. And I'm sure they both had oil in their lamps. They both had oil in their lamps. The difference is that the five wise one brought extra oil with them. But the foolish one brought no oil. Now common sense will tell you that after a while your, your lamp will burn out and you need to bring oil with you. No wonder the scripture said they were foolish. Hallelujah. Now, understand that the oil also represent the Holy Spirit. Oh, you're following me. Bless the Lord. The oil represent the Holy Spirit. And even to go further, the wicked, you know, the back in the days you have the lamp with the the, 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 the thing, the weak wicked represent the human spirit. Okay, just to let us know. And so the parable, same with the ten virgins. What is God saying in this text? He is doing a comparison. He's comparing the ten virgin to the church or the Christian life. All of us are Christians. All of us appear to be living right. All of us seems religious. We seem to be on the same path. We go to church every Sunday. We pay our tithes. We do the sacraments and we do everything. We worship. But all, not all of us are prepared to meet our Savior. Are you getting what I'm saying? We are all going to church. We are all doing the thing. All ten virgins represent Christians. Not backslider. They represent Christians and Christians who were saved. Going to church, worshiping God. And so on the journey even now of Christendom, we have the percentage of Christians that are worshiping God. But is everybody that is worshiping God ready to meet their Savior? I was reading and I, and I saw a statistic in America that 80% of Christians that are going to church, they are not really saved. There was a, a survey that done. 80% of Christians. No wonder God gave me this message to give to his people. And so if we don't be careful, some of us, as much as we, we, we say that we are worshiping God, we'll be left behind. We can all at one time be pure in art. We can do in the works of God, good works, and obeying the sacraments. But the key, the key here in the text is, are we connected to the vine? Are we filled 
with the Holy Ghost? Do we have the power of the Holy Ghost within us? And I want to do a correction in, in, our, in our theology and our, our understanding. Speaking in tongues do not mean that you're filled with the Holy Ghost. Of course, it's an evidence. But many people speak in tongues and yet they're not filled with the Holy Ghost. And yet they're speaking tongues, but they had the gift, but the gift is just a sounding symbol and there's no substance within them. And so we can also be anointed and we are not connected to God and we don't have the, and we don't have the power of God that is manifesting in us and sustaining us. And this is why I told you that the gift is without repentance. God will give us a gift to perform, to enable us. And this is why the body of Christ, sometimes they missed it and they believe that they're okay. Uh, because the last time they checked, I was in talk with God based on the fact that I've, I've trekked I've, I've checked to see how anointed I preach, how anointed I sing, how anointed I, I can shake, how anointed I can, I, can, I can speak in tongues. Oh, because I can prophesy, yes, I'm intact. No, that is not a good definition for you to examine, uh, to line up and to see if you're in order. Because the Bible said you prophesy in my name. You do all of this in my name, but depart from me. I know you not. What does it profit a man to gain this whole world? Can I ask somebody? What does it profit a man to gain this whole world and lose your soul? Because understand that this, this world, whether or not we live a few months or a year, or even if we live a century, a dec decade, this is just a prick of the entire lifespan of, 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 of you and I because unfortunately, we have a soul. Unfortunately, we have a spirit. And it's a good thing that we have a spirit for those that are, that will be going and leaving this world and spend our next life in eternity. Because can I tell you, that is everlasting and everlasting and everlasting without end. So this minute time that we have here in hurt, it is nothing compared to the bliss of eternity. And unfortunately for those that don't make it, it's eternal damnation in hell. Not just 50 years are the lifespan of how much people can live. Many people live up to 90 years and is hurt in the flesh. But eternity is gazillion, chalian. I can't even pronounce. There's no hand. There is no hand. There is no hand. So God said to me, my child, go warn my people. Go warn my people so that I can make it right. They can line up themselves because I don't want none to perish. I love my people. He said he loves his people. He loves his people so much. But it's a choice. It is a choice. It is a choice. It's a choice. It's a choice. We have to make that choice. And what does it profit a man in this world? Nothing makes means anything. We see what the pandemic does. Nothing means nothing. Money doesn't mean anything right now. The job doesn't mean anything right now. I have two nephews that just call me. My, my cousin just called me from back home and told me that, Deborah, my, son, my, my two sons, one of my son and my other, my other cousin, they're in China studying to be a doctor. Oh, yes, it's, it's brilliant. And I love that they, we have in our family doctors and they break that gap. But even if we study and we become a doctor, doesn't matter how high we become, when this whole world vanish, what can your doctor do? And not only that, when the government decide to take over this world and dictate what we can do and who can do with the one world government, who knows if our doctorate, our doctor will be able to even be of anything we don't know that look at i am working in the hospital and i can't even it's not an option where i can say okay well i'm gonna go in the lot and i'm gonna go and and just stay home the army the soldier they have to do they have to serve even if their life is in danger we have to serve this is spiritual hospital church beyond what medicine and science can offer. Did you know that some sicknesses are spiritual and cannot be healed with medical interventions? You might be wondering if you ever can be healed or delivered. Now, with the Spiritual Manual, Deborah Cohoon, a teacher, deliverance minister, intercessor, TV evangelist, explains how you can be healed spiritually, physically, emotionally, and financially. It doesn't matter how bad the issue is. 
you can be healed. Get the spiritual manual today and experience why and how God specializes in healing all things. Get your copy of The Spiritual Manual from all leading online bookstores. You can also visit www.spiritualhospital.ca or call us at 416-650-0677 for more details. Get your copy of Evangelism God's Way Manual. The Evangelism God's Way Manual is a needed resource for teaching, practical training, witnessing, following up, discipleship, launching your own ministry, and even for acquiring personal knowledge of evangelism. Deborah Cohoon now shares great foresight to those who aspire to be in leadership or are currently in ministry about soul winning. Get your copy from all leading online bookstores. Visit spiritualhospital.ca for more details. You're watching Spiritual Hospital Church, beyond what medicine and science can offer. The army, the soldier, they have to do, they have to serve, even if their life is in danger. We have to serve. But what if we die? Where do we go after this? And what if we die in the pandemic? It's not even the rupture. What if we die? Where will we go? There is life after death. And the real life begins really after death. Oh, yes. And so many of us, we have started out very well. Very well. But after long, why God says, there were five that was wise, five that were foolish, they were all Christians. I will represent then, it's a metaphor, of the Christians. We started out all well. We were on this very same journey. We were passionate for God. Yes. We were intact. We had our light, lamps burning. We have even extra light. We were filled fill up to the top. Yes. But because of the cares of life, because of the lust, of the highs for some people, the lust of the, pr the flesh and the pride of life because of the attack of the enemy who has been pressuring us for so long. And next week I'm going to bring forward what God showed me about what has happened, why we were so pressured. I don't have time to go into this. But we were so pressured. We were so pressured. Many of God's people, the remnant, we were so pressured. Because of also the nonsense that is going on in the body of Christ. Because of the long journey that of Christianity. Some of us, we are going through a long journey of Christianity. It's so long. What is happening? Nothing's happening. We become now dry. And our lamp, our oil has gone out. It's a long season in Christianity. And we forget. We said, well, maybe God is not coming again. So I can just do whatever I want to do. And so because of the long journey in Christianity, because of all the pressure, we become dry, we become weary, we become tired. Many of us have become lukewarm. Complacence, disobedience. Can I tell you that many of us has become backslidden? Yes, we become backslidden. So much so that we don't take the time to renew ourselves. We are still saved. We still love the Lord. But we've become backslidden. And it doesn't mean that we are backslidden because we are out in the world doing all sort of stuff. We can back, be backslidden and be in the church. There's a lot of backslidden people that God showed me that was in the church. No, no wonder we see the condition of what's been happening in Christendom. It's because of backslidden, the backsliddenness. We've been through so much that we haven't taken the time to recircuit ourselves, to seek the face of God, which result in no oil. No oil. Some of us, we are running in Christendom without no oil. Our oil no oil, no oil. It's just flesh that is operating. 
so dry, so dry, dry until we are dead. Dead, dead, dead. God wants to resurrect the church. He wants to resurrect the church. He looks down and he sees the condition of Christendom. And it's Ezekiel in the valley of dry bones. The valley of dry bones. But it's about to resurrect the body of Christ. If we are here to his voice. Oh yes. Oh yes. Some of us we are so prideful that even this message that I'm preaching and I'm telling you that God has given me a word for you. You don't think nothing is wrong with you. You don't think that you need a change. You don't think that you're dry, as dry as dry. And so I'm talking to you and I'm telling you that God is saying to you that we need to reestablish back ourselves in the Lord, myself, because I'm not where I need, I, I was, I need some fresh oil. Oh yes, I'm speaking to myself. I need to align myself. Certain things that bother me and the is man's kidding. Oh yes, I need to align myself. So I'm preaching to me too. But sometimes we're so prideful that because we're so prideful, the pride, when we are prideful is a spirit and the spirit will say that, pride will say that I don't need help because the pride will not be able to see that. But God is even speaking to those that are prideful. And if you don't think that you're prideful, ask somebody, they'll tell you because you can see it. Oh, glory to God. And so, even I'm on this topic when I was, I'm just talking today. Is that okay? It's okay? It's okay? How many, how many of you know that the church is a form of gas station? We come and fuel you up. Not only fuel you up, but you get an impartation. Oh, hallelujah. You get an impartation even in the very service. And so, even this thing being closed down, the church being closed down, and people said, oh, we are the church. Well, you are the church. Well, stay home and be the church. And if you don't fuel yourself, see what will happen. Oh, yes. And so what I'm saying for those that are staying home, if you stay at home and you get caught up in social media, you get caught up in the things of the world, you get caught up in gossip, caught up in everything, you will be on your way to backslidden. So make, make sure that you maintain the fire that is within you. Make sure. Spiritual Hospital Church, beyond what medicine and science can offer. Did you know that some sicknesses are spiritual and cannot be healed with medical interventions? You might be wondering if you ever can be healed or delivered. Now, with the Spiritual Manual, Deborah Cohoon, a teacher, deliverance minister, intercessor, TV evangelist, explains how you can be healed spiritually, physically, emotionally and financially it doesn't matter how bad the issue is you can be healed get the spiritual manual today and experience why and how god specializes in healing all things get your copy of the spiritual manual from all leading online bookstores you can also visit www.spiritualhospital.ca or call us at 416-650-0677 for more details. So what I'm saying, for those that are staying home, if you stay at home and you get caught up in social media, you get caught up in the things of the world, you get caught up in gossip, caught up in everything, you will be on your way to backslidden. So make, make sure that you maintain the fire that is within you. Make sure. Tune into some good preaching. 
read your books, read the Bible. The Bible is the best, the best resource for power, the best resource for fuel, the best resource for oil. Pray and go into that place with the Lord, please, because if you don't do that, it takes just months for you to find that you're backslidden. And when you're backslidden, sometimes it's so hard to come back. So the church is important. We need to regather back soon. We do really need this because it's a gas station. So, and, and the church is, is multifaceted. It is so much. It's for healing, deliverance, equipping. There's so much. And so if you think that the church is not necessary, you really don't understand what the church is. It is needed. It is needed. So we are at now. So, so, you know, because we've been through so many things, we have not taken the time to rekindle, to plug in ourselves. So we become so, confi so confined by the issues of life, by the system of life, by your circumstances. We become so in, 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 in consumed by that. So we allowed it to drain the very oil out of us. And we're at a place of backsliding. Now, the distinction with the two group, let's just examine this. The distinction with, with the two group and how we can know if your lamp is empty. How can you know if your lamp is empty? Or how can you know if you have no oil? Let's just observe the wise group and we can compare it where we are fallen short. Number one, the wise group had a relationship. And when I said the wise group, I'm talking about the church that is fuel and has oil and ready to meet their savior. Number one, the wise group had a relationship with God. They had a passion for God and the, for the things of God. On the other side, the foolish had no passion. They had no relationship with God. Number two, the wise group had the Holy Spirit. They were connected to God. How many of us feel sometimes that we are not connected? We can't connect. We just cannot connect. When the preaching has been preached, we can't feel nothing because there's no connection. You know, when you have a light circuit and you plug it in the wall, you are a Christian, and the, the appliance represents a Christian, but the appliance is not plugged into that electric circuit. Many of us as Christians, we are not plugged in. We are not plugged in. So there is no electricity which represents the Holy Ghost that is coming into our bodies. We are not plugged in, and this is why when the cares of life eat us, we have no stability. We have nothing to sustain us. And we become so depressed, so perplexed. And we put ourselves in that spiritual prison and lock ourselves in it because we don't, we don't have no connection. The Holy Ghost is a sustainer. It is a, it's, it's a, it's an energizer. It is something that will give you peace even in the midst of turmoil. Oh yes. The Holy Ghost is something that will give us joy when there is no joy around us. Yes, yes, that's what it does. And so if you have no joy, you have no peace, could it be that you're not connected? Could it be that you're not connected? Number three, the wise group, the fruit of the Spirit was evident in their lives. If the fruit of the Spirit is not evident in your life, the Holy Ghost is not there. Because the fruit of the Spirit, if you have no joy, no peace, no long-suffering, no patience, come on, check yourself. The Bible says, you shall know them, not by how much tongues they speak, not by how much they can preach and sing and jump the chairs. You shall know them 
by the fruit. What fruit are you bearing? Can I ask you? Are you bearing good fruits? Are you bearing good fruits? Are you bearing good fruits? And more fruits, and more fruits, and more fruits. And so the, the, the good, the wise group, the fruit of the Spirit was evident in their life. And so the fruit of the Spirit if is evident in our life. It is possible that there's oil flowing. It's possible that we have oil. Even in the midst of this thing, yes, I know that. It's natural for human beings to be fearful. It is a natural thing. It's the way we respond. It's a natural mechanism that God placed in us when things like this happen for us to be fearful. But as I mentioned a few months back, there's a difference with being fearful and the spirit of fear. There's a big difference. There's a big difference. Now, as believers, if you have the Holy Spirit in you, it is your comforter. Oh yes, it is your comforter. And even through this time, you should not be have a capacity of fear that is consuming you and you can't function. Number four. The good group. The five wise ones. Their minds were not caught up with the things of the world. How many of you know that we have many Christians and their minds, they're in church, they're serving God, but their mind is not on God, not on the things of God, but their minds are so caught up on the things of the world. 